So um, our next speaker is uh, Kees uh, Larsen from Denmark, and she's going to talk to us about parenting a child uh, that's in pain. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And my name is as uh, my name is Kiss, and I'm an OT with my own company, the Unique Barn, also called the New Child, in Denmark. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I am also a volunteer in the Danish OI Foundation Society, and I see a lot of uh, children and grown-ups with OI. In my company, I meet lots of parents, and I facilitate often an exchange of experiences in groups of parents. All the knowledge I have about children in pain, trauma, parents' reactions, parents' need, I use them to educate the parents to take care of the child. I want the parent to stand stronger at home, living a daily life. I want to have the parents to give the children the best possible childhood, physical, mental, and social. <clears throat> this speak is from my point of view, and it's my opinion, my own experience, and experiences from the parents I need I meet, sorry. <laughs> um, but I also have a personal experience, as I have two daughters, and one of them have OI type 2 or severe type 3. She has had over 500 fractures before she was 18 years old, and she's 26 today. My experience as her mom has taught me a lot and made me look for ways to help the parents. Maria has given me many reflections from a child's point of view. I never knew before I had a child with severe OI that I could love and hate in the same minute. My range of emotions got wider and wilder. I have seen a side of myself that both scared me and made me proud. So. I have several times been putting on a bandage on, on, fem, on female fractures in my home on my child. For her first year, she had about 50 fractures, and many of them we handled at home. When she grew older and she began, began to speak, she would be screaming, no, mom, don't touch me, please. I did it anyway, uh, several times, lots of time. Because if we did not do it, someone else would. And would they be as gentle and loving as us? Not always. So we did it ourselves. But with time, I lost the ability to stay calm in the situation. Something broke inside me with time. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I can do this. Uh, and today, I can put the bandits on. But inside, I'm a mess while I do it. So I want you to know how important it is to support the parents with supervision and coping strategies to handle what happens inside the parents. So. All parents are different and have different point of view, different experience. So to not only tell my point of view, I asked parents, how do you feel about your child in pain? And this is what they told me. A huge grief watching your child in pain, frustration over not being able to find a solution, fear of the future, the impact on the child's futures, possibilities, thinking a lot, to make sure to do the right thing at the right time. Huge responsibility, fear of missing something, fear of the child's reactions. Maybe they will be hiding the pain to avoid the consequences. Sadness, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> sadness by watching the child being held back from activities in life. 
feeling of powerlessness, but also joy and happiness in small situations in daily living. I have learned to appreciate and really, really love being at home, four people around the table, having a total normal dinner, no one in pain, and I would just be, <sighs> this is true happiness. This is a quote I got from a mom from USA with a child with severe OI as mine. And she wrote me, Happiness do not depend on what you get in life. It depends on how you live your life with what you get. I use the quote also to help the parents change perspective to how to live this life with the best possibilities for themselves and for the children. This is uh, data from uh, the National Research Center for Welfare in Denmark. In 2011, they looked on parents to children with special needs, 11 years old. So those children does not all have pain. They have special needs. But this is just one of the things they found. This is moms, what they go to the doctor with. And as you can see, the red one is general moms, and the blue is moms with children with special needs. And the moms I know with children with special needs, they, they don't go to the doctor that quick. So I think there is more behind this. But as you can see, the moms to children with special needs, they go to the doctor with anxiety, depression, migraine, pain in the heart, sleeping problems, fatigue, pain in joints and muscle more than other moms. This is also the moms that stand beside a child in pain. They have to take care of the child too, despite of how they feel. So, child experience. Children can be in pain and happy. We can't always see it from how they act if they are in pain. They can be in pain and active. They can be in pain and not showing it. We made that, uh, that's a pain diary for Marie because when she met her favorite doctor at the hospital for evaluation, as soon as he came in the room, and we could have been fighting with pain for 14 days. And when Janustaka entered the room, she looked at him and she was just like, ah. and he would say, how are you feeling? Fine. <laughs> Do you have any pain? No. <laughs> have you had any fractures recently? No. And I could sit beside and I would say, uh, Maria, do you remember last week, your arm? I say, oh yeah, but that's a long time ago. <laughs> so I made to, to, to show this to the doctors and to her teachers, we made this pain diary so that she didn't have to, in the situation, she, she would, because what she said in the situation was true for her, but I had to give a wider picture of it. So score, in my, in what I hear from, what I saw, and what I hear from other parents depends on who's asking. How are you asking? Have you had any pain? Are you in pain now? Did you have something a week ago? If you are more detailed, she will ask. She will answer. And the moment you're asking is also depending on the score. So this is very short. Children in pain, we all know it's biological factors, psychological, and social factors. Professionals have responsibility for the biological part. Medication, treatment, painkiller, surgeries. That's one out of three. Parents have two out of three factors. Parents can work with the psychological, 
the child's mood and feelings. The child can regulate with the parents, coping strategies, learning from the parents, how to handle pain, sadness, and other feelings. The feeling of having the strength to handle this is also influencing the child's feeling of how painful this is. So to do this, to help with the psychological part, the parents need to take care of own feelings and coping strategies to help their child. If parents don't have to regulate, if they don't know how to regulate their own feelings or don't have any coping strategies, they cannot help the child. So we have to start with the parents. Social, the parents also is the ones who keep daily life normal, routines, distraction from the pain, making the child socialize with peers, hobbies, school, and the parents are the ones to give the information to school and kindergarten. Every parent, every family is different. And we always have to look on the single child, the family, what are their values in life, and how, what do they need to balance this life with the child in pain and normal life. Parents need help to focus on what they can do. They need to know how important they are. Mom and dad might need help to let go of the urge and need to remove the pain. They have to move their focus to supporting the child, to develop coping strategies and have focus on living the best life from a child's perspective. I use a lot of knowledge about the autonomic nervous system to help the parents help the child. especially the, the parasympathetic nervous system and how to activate it in themselves and in the child. Professionals can work with the parents on non pharmacological I could say that word yesterday. <laughs> Non-pharmacological interventions. Yes, I did it. <laughs> uh, emotional support using the autonomic nervous system. I really think, I can't say that enough, use the autonomic nervous system. By listening and letting the parents know that they are not alone in this, that you will support them. Focus on the autonomic nervous system, both in parents and in the child. Teach the parent about how to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Because we can activate it in the parents and in the child and thereby make the pain experience less, and not as, um, it, it won't interfere with daily life as much if we work that way. So, the child, in my opinion, will experience less pain if we work together as a team. Biological, psychological, and social. So, take home. Include the parent in the treatment of the child's pain. Teach them the import importance of them, their participation and work with them on coping strategies. Work with the autonomic nervous system. Thank you. This is my daughter Marie. She's here today too. She made a TEDx. Yeah, <laughs> on living her life with OI. You should, you should go see it. So, and you can find me on uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook as Dionika Barn. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a very interesting talk. We have time for one question, I guess. Are there any questions? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Lauren. Katie Barlow. I'm a physiotherapist from the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital in Stanmore. 
Uh, we run a transition clinic, and I was just interested to understand your opinion about what do you feel the role is from a parent's perspective as you transition a young person into adult care? Can I have 10 minutes? Uh, 24 seconds. It's because it's, very, it's a big dilemma. Because as parents, we want the children to be independent and work with the professionals. But for the young people, asking them, there's so many aspects that um, makes them answer in different ways. A young boys going into a nurse and says, how you do? I'm doing fine. He, he's not going to tell her how he really feels. And then the mom beside has to say, oh, he's not right, that's not right, that's something, he's, he's in pain and he's telling me every morning that he's in pain and he can't go to school. And so there's a lot of um, things going on in the relationship between the child and the parent and the professionals. And if the professional really used the time to listen to the young people, we, we could let them go. If they had a, a, a professional they really, they really trust and that they would be honest to. But that means you have to know someone who knows them before they make the transition. So you have to have professionals that knows them and follows them in the transition if you want us parents to let go. And I know that's what the professionals want. <laughs> Sometimes it's to, oh, mom, please, could you go out while I talk with her? Um, but but it's, it's very because the treatment is depending on that you get the right information and you might not get it from the young people. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the nodding. <laughs> <laughs>